Um, that's what – I mean, that was the easiest decision ever just because of how consi- – first of all, he was that way in practice since the day we got him. Uh, he wasn't given a lot of reps. They all picked up as a wimp, but – Brock was the most consistent quarterback that I've been around, and it started that way in rookie camp to OTAs to training camp, and, and that's I felt a certain way. Our players felt a certain way, but um, then when he got in because of injury and he had those seven games and went through every situation possible, playoff games, um, comebacks, uh, he did it here. I think we went to overtime here when we were down versus the Raiders in uh, 22, but just what he did was – it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't just the record. It wasn't the stats. The film showed it, and that's why we knew if he would be healthy going into the next year, uh, we had a hell of a quarterback. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm similar to my dad. I, I try to treat my son with respect, and I try to make – I don't want him to do stuff just because I'm making him do stuff. I want him to do it because he knows it's right. But I also am quick to snap if he doesn't know it's right, and you got to teach him quick. So, but the um, be honest with your son. Keep talking to him. Don't just lay the hammer. Do both. Thank you, Dan. From my dad, almost the same thing I just told that guy as a parent. Like you got to be honest with people. It, um, it's cool as a coach because you work so hard and you have so many more years of experience, so you should know what you're talking about. You should. Um, but if you're honest with people and treat them right and stuff and don't shy away from what people don't want to hear, usually most people are respected and uh, they'll appreciate you for making them better. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't even want to go there yet. I just, someone better watch me. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, every game is its own game. So it's when you come to percentages and everything, I mean, I mean, every time you play roulette whether it's red or black it still has to do with that it doesn't have to do with the previous so like i'm glad we came back i'm glad we could do that stuff but um i never felt like we couldn't and yeah i do get those stats when you see they're like damn that's interesting but i've never felt that we couldn't and i'm glad that we did the last two weeks but how will that play in the next one i mean it should have no relevance but at least our players know they've been there before they know how to feel when they're down and you should always know you're out of no game until the clock ends. I've known that from coaching a lot, and I feel like our players should always feel that way, but definitely these last two weeks should, with their experiences these last two weeks, should make them feel a lot more confident. I'm so pumped for Dan. I'm so pumped for Washington. Dan's a hell of a coach. They got a hell of a one. I know they've gone through a lot of stuff in these last 20 years, but having AP and DQ is as good as it gets. Like Dan taught me so much in Atlanta. I'm very grateful for how much he's um, helped my career and him and Stacy and just what he's going to do for their organization. Um, knowing Adam, knowing Jen, like they're set up very well. What's that? Um, I, mean, I just loved watching I, watching how he ran a team. Um, certain things he did on the meetings and stuff. You take you take things from everybody, but um, Dan, the way he, the way he carried himself, the way he talked to the team, uh, was as good as I've been around. Um, I mean, I almost the same things I learned growing up in life. But my dad was it was so cool to watch him with the staff and everything. My dad, um. My dad worked as hard as anyone I've ever been around, and whatever he worked at, you knew exactly what he felt. And he would keep it real with people. That didn't work with everybody, but um, it worked with the majority of people. And my dad's always told me to treat people honest, study what you do, be confident in it, and it's, it's helped me my whole life. What's that? Adam, yeah, Adam was huge. I mean, 
AP, me, John, we all got here right after the Super Bowl in 17. Um, from Atlanta, we came here and met for a dinner. First time really all getting a person and knowing each other. And we needed to all work together. And AP was huge. He helped John out a ton. He helped me out a ton. And um, Washington's got a hell of a deal in AP. I'm so glad he sent you to me because I've thought about this a while. And you just got to go talk to Debo. That, it is what it is. We'll be all right. It's the field we got. We'll be all right. We're good. No, we're not, we're not going to completely change our schedule and do something crazy. Like, we'll deal with what we got, and it, we're, we're good. Uh, it depends. I mean, it's all so different, so I can't give you one answer. But my biggest thing with our defense now is, yeah, I get how that first half went. It was as bad as it could be. But they also tightened up in the second half. And as they tightened up in the second half, our offense got rolling. And that's why we got a 10-point lead. And that's my main thing on Sunday. Like, no matter what we do, Chiefs are a good team. They're going to have their moments. And when they do... All right, we got to weather them, but when they don't, we got to capitalize. And when we capitalize, the offense got to balance it out. And if we do that at the same time as a team, I like our chances. Um, I mean, you want smart people who got good personal skills, but the biggest thing is getting people who can work with your staff and understand what you're saying. You need guys who can learn how you want to do it. And once they do learn how you want to do it, then you want to hear everything else. So it's building it that way. Um, well, we, we were having a number of injuries, especially at safety. and. You got all these young guys and stuff who you can work out and train, but we weren't in that position. We needed a guy who could play, who understood nickel, who understood safety, who could do a bunch of things and didn't need the reps of it. So Logan was a guy that I personally had played against a bunch and I always felt he was that way. Um, I, I actually asked Tom Brady what he thought of him and Tom said, from a mental standpoint and everything, I couldn't tell you the recommendation he gave. and. Logan's been exactly that. Logan understands this game. He's smart as can be, and uh, he's been a huge ad for us in the time of year we added him. Um, Trent, I can't. Trent's unbelievable. First of all, I I've coached a long time and. And just look at the tackles I've been around in my career, and no one is wired like Trent. He's a different athlete, a different bird, um, which everyone respects, and that's enough to get the respect in the league. But when you actually are around Trent and know how he handles himself, how much he loves football, the way he plays, the physicality he enjoys, um, how smart he is, the type of person he is, Trent's one of the most important people and best people I've been around in my life, and I plan on that being till the day I'm not around here anymore. Wired differently? Yeah, he's bigger, faster, quicker, stronger, more athletic. Anything has to do with athletic ability. Oh, yeah, I... I think D'Amico's got that locked up. If he doesn't, someone cheated. Um, D'Amico's the man. Like, it made me sick to lose him. I was with D'Amico as a linebacker. We knew how special he was then. We knew how special he was when he was our quality control. We had to promote him within six months of QC, how special he was as a linebacker coach, a coordinator. Whatever D'Amico does, he's going to succeed. Um, Houston's lucky to have him. Be as loud as they were tonight. Like, I couldn't hear anyone tonight. Our fans were so loud. Um, 
I'll tell you what, when we did the NFC Championship game and I came out for pregame and all the Lions fans were there early, so there's a lot of blue in the crowd, so I was a little nervous for the first time in my time in um, at Levi's. And by the time we came out for kickoff, the seats were packed, and I didn't see any blue jerseys the rest of the game, and I know they were there. But our fans come strong, they're loud, and as good as it's ever been and anywhere I've ever been. Uh, they do an awesome job. They're a big part of it. I mean, I'm always pulling for Dion. There's no doubt. But my wife went to Colorado and I went to Texas. I don't know if they play each other. I haven't kept up with the divisions. That's all right. Then hopefully all of them. Like with athletes and stuff? Like with the players? They're going to be flying. It's going to be that fast. No, I'm just joking. I don't know. It always gets better, more technical. Watch the NBA, watch everything. The fact that people at four have professional coaches, like detailing all everything, means everything's getting a lot more detailed and expertise. I mean, that's the only reason we made the trade, because we had to get that, like, percentage. It makes me more excited, because I loved Ed. Like, Ed was the man, but I, f like, and I hope I don't offend Ed, but I feel like his son's a little bit better, and so I feel good. All right. Oh, I, I've known about this for a while, because my daughter... Uh, who's a fifth grader, but since she was in third grade, like loves fashion. And so her and Kristen always make things for each other. So my daughter has been making skirts and giving it to Kristen. So like to watch this go down in the last month or so, like it's been really cool because Kristen's so talented, such a good person. And the fact she got Taylor and all this, like what would bother me? Uh, I don't know that. If it affected the three and a half hours, it would bother the heck out of me, but it definitely doesn't. <laughs> uh, Annoyed? Quit taking our guys. Like, I mean, what is it's... What is it about the system that's so intriguing? I don't know. That's, that's how it always works. I mean... I don't know. You got to ask the owners and stuff, but I mean. I don't know. I don't know Shane or Thomas. I've gone against them, but so they're good coaches. So I'm sure they would do a hell of a job. That's awesome. Um, all of it is kind of surreal. I mean, I grew up just a coach's son and a fan of it all, and to be in the same situation as my dad was doing the same stuff is a little weird. I didn't realize it was a life goal of mine until it became one, and I think it is, so it's, it's really special. So good to see you guys. What's up, man? Oh, that I've ever coached. Um, man, that's a tough one. Um, I know the ones I haven't coached that were most memorable. The ones I've coached, did, did Trent help you out with that? He, he just tried to stump me in front of everybody. Um, I'm trying to think for you, buddy. Um, the NFC Championship in 19 was really cool. I never thought we'd be able to dominated a game like that with eight passes that was really special um but i can't give one because there there's not one special that sticks out 
I also remember loving Thanksgiving in Washington. I feel like we were like five and six, and and we went to Dallas, and we ended up we ended up blowing them out. But it was just such a cool feeling because it gave us some energy that led us to the playoff game. But I'm just telling you, in the NFL, when you have a cool game on a Thursday and you actually get three days off where you can just sit there and enjoy the game is unheard of. So, like, when you got three games to enjoy a victory, those are the ones I remember, which was Thanksgiving in Dallas. It was Cincinnati and Cleveland. Um, I know we did it here twice, so there you go, dude. Appreciate it, man. Brock's amazing. Brock, all he's done since he's been thrown in the spotlight is ball. Like, just watch the film. He tears it up. And he's got to deal with so much stuff, which is cool with Brock because he doesn't listen to. So he comes out the next week.